Ja Rule's fun time spectacular feed friendly Geordies. For those of you who don't know, Alan Austin is the second best economic journalist in this country. Narrowly edged out by Koshi because he can't drop bars like this. What's wrong with the world, mama? People living like they ain't got no mamas. I think the whole world is addicted to the drama, only attracted to the things that'll bring you trauma. That was, that was cool, man. It was kind of hot. But look, there can only be one hall every generation. There's nothing wrong with being oats. And this is his masterpiece. He points out in Independent Australia, excellent news source, that the Liberals were just celebrating their 75th anniversary and have had so few accomplishments in that time that they had to steal a bunch of Labor's second tier accomplishments, advertise them as their primary accomplishments and hope no one noticed. Well, unfortunately for them, Alan Austin, very fitting that he looks like the be Pepperidge Farm remembers. And in celebration of the Liberal Party's diamond anniversary, we have blue headphones that much like the Liberal Party are cheap, of poor quality, and I'm ashamed to be on the same continent as them. We also need to acknowledge that this video wouldn't be surprised if it cost them $100,000. It's got a thousand views, it's on their channel, and it has more dislikes than likes, and that ratio is about to get a hell of a lot more stark, isn't it? Let's start with how they describe their foundation. This is their Jebediah Springfield story. How good is Australia? And how good are Australians? In the midst of World War II, it was Robert Menzies who denounced another conflict, the class war, as a false war. Oh, no way! He debunked an imaginary war while Labor was fighting World War II, exclusively because of him. He sold iron to the Japanese, who then turned that into war machines that they used against us. And while men were dying in Papua New Guinea, purely because of his fuck up, he was sitting in Canberra, twiddling his thumbs, realising, hey, Omo's war on stage, false war. Prime Minister for 23 years. No wonder every Liberal Prime Minister is the Homer Simpson safety technician of world leaders. That's their bar. Ah, oh, one could only dream of being as incompetent as Menzies, who apparently beat Labor Prime Minister Ben Chifley because of. Menzies observed there were many Australians, salary earners, shopkeepers, skilled artisans, professional men and women, farmers and others who were neither rich enough to have individual power nor organised for pressure politics. These hard-working Australians, he said, were envied, taxed and taken for granted. And yet, they were the backbone of the nation. To Menzies, they were the forgotten people. Damn, that is a mythology that even Mormons could look down on as being a bit far-fetched. They think Menzies was able to form federal government just five years after it was founded, after he had fucked up so royally that the party he belonged to before that had to dissolve in disgrace because they very nearly caused Australia to be invaded. But that did not match the people's overwhelming desire for small business tax cuts. Nothing to do with the fact that Ben Chifley was trying to reform the banking sector to make sure that the Great Depression could never happen again. And the banks didn't like that not being able to cause economic collapses, what else are banks for? So they pumped huge amounts of money into Menzies' campaign. I'm talking levels of money that would make you forget that Menzies caused your son to die. Which, sadly, because it was the 40s, I'm imagining was, Dear Lord, what a campaign war chest. 250 pounds, which in today's money is $8 billion. Now look at his policy accomplishments. Keep in mind, he was in for 23 years. It proves that the only thing that was remarkable about Menzies' reign was that he was in for 23 years. It's so disparaging. It proves that the Liberal Party's entire existence is just 75 years of the same recycled, budget-draining, middle-class welfare programs renamed to make the public think but it's got a new name. From the outset, the Liberal Party in government sought to promote the centrality of Australian family life through practical measures that included an end to rationing, the extension of child endowment, baby bonus, and the encouragement of home ownership through home savings grants for married couples, first home buyers grant, tax relief for school fees, and the extension of funding to Catholic and independent schools. Yeah, cut money to public schools and give it to the ones that force you to go to scripture class. If there's one thing the Catholics need, it's more money. It's the same song and dance. Menzies was smooth criminal. The Howard government was Alien Ant Farms cover. It's the same song performed by someone with. Less hair. Menzies' time as Prime Minister was marked by some of the great nation-building programs of the last century, including the Snowy Mountains Scheme. Chiefly built that. Between 1949 and 1972, 
Australia's economy tripled in size. Yeah, because Australia's population tripled in size due to Ben Chifley's change to the migration policy. Means he's just sat back in his chair, read the newspaper, oh, more money's coming in. Don't mind if I do. He had a double chin for a reason. He was lazy. This video is essentially saying everything that happened under Menzies was because of Menzies. Someone in Hobart ate a chicken pie. Menzies. A dog licked its nuts. Menzies. During his 23 year reign, the Earth successfully made 23 rotations around the sun. The dandy that made sure the universe was just dandy. After being Treasurer and Minister for External Affairs, William McMahon became Prime Minister in 1971, where he continued the government's record of economic stability. Stability? The country went into recession and inflation jumped to Zimbabwe levels. What part of no one has any money and everything's way more expensive screams stable to you? The fact that when the chips are down you learn that family's all that matters? Yep, that's what the baby bonus is all about. If that's what you mean, sure, he fathered Julian McMahon and without him we wouldn't have Hollywood's greatest villain of all time, Doctor Doom. So credit where credit's due, a sperm from a man whose nickname was Billy Big Ears went on to be a hunk. But by 1972, Australians decided it was time and elected Gough Whitlam's Labor Party. Within the space of three years, mortgage rates had risen from 7 to 10%. The unemployment rate had doubled and the inflation rate tripled. Oh, someone finally said what we're all thinking. Whitlam, facing the exact same circumstances as everyone else in the world, i.e. the Saudis doing what they do best, be cunt, that drastically cut oil production, which, yeah, often leads to inflation, when oil is as hard to come by as it is in Mad Max 2. Whitlam did way better than the rest of the world given the global economic circumstances, but you know who didn't? Fraser. Every one of the indicators bar one that they just used to chastise Whitlam got far worse under Fraser, and he wasn't facing no oil crisis either. By that time, the Americans had put the Saudis and Australia, because <clears throat> Whitlam was ousted by the CIA, back in their place. Oh wait, sorry, I forgot that Fraser didn't win that election because he was installed by the US Empire. No, it was because of this crushingly lame Ad. Australia, you've been sleeping, brought down to your knees. We've lost a lot of living in the dark of these three years. We can look towards the future and the way things are to be. Turn on the lights, Australia. It's up to you and me. Turn on the lights and we'll live again. It's up to you and me. Sung by Renee Gayer, written and authorised by T. Eggleton for the Liberal Party. Fraser was in for eight years and he did so little that they could only stretch out his time in office to two minutes if they included an entire one minute ad. Here's what they count as major accomplishments. Malcolm Fraser created the Federal Police increased defence spending and opened the Australian Institute of Sport in 1981. Institute of Sport? He was Prime Minister for nearly a decade. Could you imagine if he was God and he had just seven days to create the universe? He'd currently just be floating around in a vacuum bragging, mm, I had lunch and then falls about rather sporting if we invented the game badminton. Did you get around to doing it? Uh, no, no, I had to deal with inflation. This next part is what irks me so much. These are the only environmental accomplishments they have to brag about in 75 years. While the environmental credentials of the party were strengthened by the banning of mining on Fraser Island and whaling in Australian waters. Dude, banning mining on one island and stopping whaling when there was no demand for whale oil anymore as we took your advice in your campaign ad, we turned on the light, are not major accomplishments. The only major accomplishment you brag about And by the declaration of the Great Barrier Reef as a marine park Wasn't even you That was Whitlam's idea He was going to expand on it But he had to first fight this massive high court legal battle With the state Liberal government That wanted to start drilling for oil in the Great Barrier Reef only in Queensland, eh? Fraser then swanned in due to his CIA connections after all the heavy lifting was done and decided, mm, I think I'll expand on that marine park a tad. Oh, how generous of you. In Whitlam's biography, so I can't remember the exact figures, but he was outlining that he wanted to make the Great Barrier Reef Marine Park protect four-fifths of the Great Barrier Reef. Fraser 
Got it around one-fifth. That is the only major environmental accomplishment they can brag about in three quarters of a century. Something they didn't do and made a much worse version of. That more or less sums up their entire governing history. You could boil this video down to one sentence. Liberals, doing what we did to Labor's broadband network with pretty much everything else for 75 years. I could go on, but then we get into the Howard years and in the words of Little Wayne, uh, you gotta pay for this. But you know what struck me when I was watching this video? This 15 minute long propaganda piece is exactly what we learned at high school. Your year 10 history teacher should have been legally required to end every lesson with Authorised by Peter Fitzgerald, Liberal Party Camper. That's what happens when the Liberal Party get to sit in power for 70% of the time. They get to restructure this nation's history into an ad for them. Don't know what to do about that, but I have two starter recommendations. Like this video, and then go onto this video and Nagasaki the dislike button. Just to see if they disable the like button like they did their comments, the wimps. Happy 75th birthday, you fucks. Please share and comment below. Come in.